Do you all know which profession currently commands the highest average salary in China? That's right, it's the semiconductor chip engineer. According to data released by a reputable Chinese domestic job recruitment website, chip engineers receive the highest compensation, averaging around 26,000 renminbi per month. For those familiar with the situation in China, this is a considerably high salary, considering that some industries have an average monthly salary of only 5,000 renminbi. By the way, if you are working in the semiconductor field, would you choose to work in China? Feel free to explain the reasons. Everyone is welcome to discuss in the comments. A lack of key semiconductor talent and the rising cost of such talent are hot topics in the industry in China right now. In fact, the salary change of an industry reflects the changes and demands of economic development from a certain aspect. The serious shortage of talents in the semiconductor industry has become a common challenge faced by the global industry. With the arrival of the golden decade of the CI industry, the salary of talents has also shown a clear growth trend. In the past few years, the influx of large amounts of capital has led to the rise of China's domestic semiconductor chip companies, and at the same time, the limited top R&D talents are sought after. Nowadays, salary increase seems to be the most direct way for Chinese companies to poach employees. However, unscrupulous poaching has undoubtedly increased the labor cost of the entire industry. So, is the salary increase a good thing for China's chip industry? Can salary increases promote the development of China's semiconductor industry and form an independent supply chain? Well, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about today. Previously, it was difficult to attract the brightest talent into the industry. There were several reasons for this, with two key factors chief among them. First, semiconductors require an insane level of detail and accuracy and any part of the semiconductor design or manufacturing process requires years of study even to get to an acceptable level. Second, and perhaps most importantly, all this studying and effort doesn't get the student a better paid job than simply learning to code application-level software. As a consequence, the brightest talent, even those that studied semiconductor design, would therefore go to the big Western internet companies and get much better pay than China's struggling semiconductor companies could ever afford. However, in the past couple of years, we have seen a huge increase in China's semiconductor talent demand. Companies are becoming increasingly vertically integrated, launching their own semiconductor departments, and startups are appearing everywhere. Simply having a lot of investment and demand does not mean core talent appears overnight, however. Talent takes time, meaning the best workers right now can demand high wages. The upward trend is a good thing for the industry in China, but it needs to be managed. Ensuring the new influx of talent doesn't all fall into the design space to the detriment of other key parts of the value chain, especially chip fabrication plants and equipment manufacturers where the country faces the strongest pressure from foreign governments, is crucial. As for the skyrocketing salaries for chip engineers, semiconductor startups face a problem. They either increase operating costs and burn more money by attracting the best talent with high wages, or ignore this trend and risk recruiting less than ideal candidates. HR personnel in the industry are even saying that the best graduates may have multiple offers, and play them against one another in an attempt to get the highest salary possible. The best graduates, those graduating at master's or PhD level, can demand around 400,000 renminbi per year, $62,000, per year. Such a figure has been touted in the media as the graduate salary OPPO has been offering to semiconductor engineers. This is an extremely high wage for someone with no actual work experience. Adding a point here, Oppo disbanded its in-house chip research team earlier this year. It seems that despite substantial investment, they were unable to produce their own chips. Regardless, salaries still seem to be rising, with Alibaba offering up to 500,000 to 600,000 renminbi per year to newbie chip engineers. For comparison, the average annual salary for a semiconductor engineer in the US is around $110,000, a little over 700,000 renminbi. This upwards trend in salaries is putting huge pressure not just on startups but on all traditional semiconductor companies. It is simply too hard to compete with the internet firms that have moved into this space and on top of that, smartphone companies are poaching employees too. There is a double whammy of increased cost and competition for talent as well as a reduction in customers. Alibaba may have been your customer before but now they've taken your employees and are making their own chips. Remember as well that these are graduate wages. Experienced semiconductor veterans can demand much more not just for their talent but also for the simple fact there are so few of them.
this situation makes it easier for them to frequently switch companies to gain higher wages, or at least threaten to move as a bargaining chip for a better deal. That's not good for the long-term development of a semiconductor company and its products, where designs can take more than 18 months from start to finish. In fact, the skyrocketing salaries for chip engineers causes structural problems in the industry. It is worth pondering the effect all this will have on chip manufacturers like SMIC and semiconductor manufacturing equipment. SME, makers like AMEC, companies propelling the twin strategic priorities of China's chip independence plan. New talent is attracted into the semiconductor industry due to increasing wages, but these wages are mainly focused on the chip design industry. Internet companies and handset companies are pushing salaries up, but none of these companies are developing equipment or setting up fabrication plants. New talent will want to move into design potentially at the expense of China's key choke points, fabs and equipment. Wages here will have to keep up as well if they are to make sure they attract all the new talent they require. Of course, this adds to costs, potentially causing Chinese fabs to face the same cost problems those in Western countries face compared to the likes of Taiwan. Indeed, Chinese fabs, such as SMIC have been offering much higher wages to foreign employees in order to attract them away from Taiwan or South Korea. It's unclear whether they are willing to increase wages for local employees as well. Naturally, foreign semiconductor companies' China operations will not be unaffected by such trends. While Chinese companies are receiving various forms of government backing, foreign companies with design centers in China aren't. It is hard to retain the best talent in your China operations if a startup, internet company, or phone company next door suddenly offers double the salary. China is no longer the low-cost design center it once was. What's more, high salary doesn't mean high quality. Not all graduates are receiving such high wages though. Some people I talk to in the industry argue that so many new graduates are entering the semiconductor industry, especially digital design, that most of them can't demand high salaries because companies can just choose a different graduate. Indeed, many companies have admitted there is no lack of junior engineers. A small percentage who are postgraduates and have real-world experience can choose between 10 or 20 different offers. But most of the new graduates have taken self-study or a training class to switch to the semiconductor industry from other majors. Semiconductor talent on paper has increased, but most of it has limited ability and experience. There aren't enough quality graduates in the market, and three to six months of crash courses is not enough to create high-quality talent. Wages may have increased, but the difficulty hasn't. Once a chip is taped out, you can't edit it like you can a piece of software, the industry has a very low tolerance for errors. HR needs to be more aware of the actual abilities of these new semiconductor engineers, and stipulate appropriate wages and positions for them. All in all, there is no denying salary increases were needed if China was to attract talent into the industry. So from this perspective, this trend is a good thing for the country. However, the money could be flowing to the wrong places and could harm many in the sector. Startups and traditional semiconductor companies are struggling to compete as their former customers start poaching talent and to fill the talent gap the market is now flooded with new semiconductor engineers with little real-world experience, or deep enough knowledge to make sure the final product is bug-free. What's more important is this increase in talent and wages doesn't seem to be heading to where China needs it most, essentially fabs and SME companies. The heightened interest and rush to learn semiconductor design is no bad thing for China, but right now it is unbalanced and potentially detrimental to some parts of the industry. Okay, that's all for today. How do you think about it? Please put your comments or suggestions in the comments below and share your thoughts about today's topic. We will see you in the next video. Goodbye.